Doctors of Reddit, what made you say how the duck is this person still alive? A guy I know with cancer smokes two packs a day and drinks a fifth of fireball every day. He lives in a trailer so dirty there is a half inch of dirt according to his wife's mother. He recovered from surgeries in that trailer. Eventually we got word he was quitting chemo and was just going to accept death. Five years ago he was given two months to live. He is now completely cancer free. Life is just weird sometimes. My resident called me urgently one night and said I needed to come to the hospital. A young man was cut in half by a train. I asked why I needed to come in. There was no way he could survive that. She explained that somehow he was maintaining his pressure and wasn't bleeding out. When I arrived. I found that the, the force of train had sealed off all the major vessels from the pelvis down. To that stick out. Guy gets shot in the abdomen. Drops to his knees. Shooter puts one through the top of his head near his forehead. Bullet exits through his jaw. He wouldn't stop complaining. About how much he hates that the guy who shot him. Young girl driving a car gets t-boned on the passenger side by an Altima going at least 70 miles per hour. Her car looks like it was hit by an IED so we assumed she was deceased upon arrival when the other crew on scene said our focus was extricating the people in the Altima. Girl driving was completely unhurt. By a Volvo. Kind of retelling but, one time a cadaver on which I was performing an autopsy had a lung which was flipped upside down. When I tried to flip it to the proper position. Bloop. It flipped right back to upside down. After some due diligence we realized the lung was a transplant. And the surgeons who performed the transplant had attached the organ incorrectly. The lung had been fighting to be upside down its whole life in this other man. After 15 or so years. The man eventually moved in a way that allowed it to flip over. Resulting in his death. Not really a how the duck is this person still alive. But more of a how the duck did this person live this long with this condition. As a student had a young guy come in who self inflicted a 22 to the inside of his mouth and passed out. Awoke the next morning. Didn't recall the night prior. Went to work. Two hours into work he says he's not feeling right and starts acting odd. Co-workers call M's. They take him in and the ED is working him up and in the process notices a mix of clear fluid and blood in the back of his mouth. They call Ent and get a CT head. Shows 11 or so bullet fragments throughout his noggin. The guy was acting by that time completely unfazed. I was very phased. Working in an aboriginal community a woman walked in complaining of a head hatch behind her eye. She was told to take a seat and as she turned around she had a butter knife sticking out the back of her skull. Apparently a drunk relative came home and stabbed her while she slept. Edit, yes she survived was flown back to Townsville for imaging. Then on to Brisbane for surgery. I helped take care of an old dude who had one leg amputated. And had broken his other leg so he was seeing us because of that. He was on oxygen and not being very compliant with using his wheelchair. We were talking with him and he was getting really argumentative. How am I supposed to chop wood in a wheelchair was what he kept demanding. When asked how he was chopping wood with one leg in the first place he responded that he'd crawl into the woods and hop up to chop the wood. This was even more concerning. When the doctor asked how he was carrying his axe, oxygen, and the wood he chopped he looked him straight in the eye and said, I carry him on my back. Not sure if he was serious. But he was pretty dang grizzled and looked like he may have been crawling through the woods. For me it was a guy who was cleaning his loaded shotgun and it blew half his face off. Jaw and all. He was actually pretty good from the mid nose up. The thing that surprised me is how good of shape he was in afterwards. He didn't even go to the IQ we just admitted him to the med circ floor. He was up communicating via whiteboard within a few hours and was adamant that he did not try to heal himself. Got a psych consult anyway but they agreed. Another inch dorsal with a barrel of that gum and he would have been done for. You know those big. 16-18 inch kitchen knives that everyone has. Had a lady come in with one sticking sideways out of her neck. Handle on the left side and top sticking out the right. She went to all. Where they removed the knife in one of the most tense. As whole clenched moments in history minimal bleeding. 
apparently the knife split right between her major blood vessels and airway. Was lying right against them. Didn't scratch em. Absolutely incredible. Infantry guy in Afghanistan in 2009. Some old guy came up to us in a bazaar and asked us to give him a ride to a city. His arm was wrapped up. We said no. Since we don't exactly do that. He unwrapped his arm. His hand wrist was missing and his two arm bones were exposed and white. Everything else was green and black. I have no idea how he was alive. Much less up and walking around. Work in a hospital. A guy showed up who had burst a tire going 180 km per hour and flipped his car multiple times. His car was right off. The only injuries he got were a few scratches and a bruise. Edit. Thanks for internet points. No I don't know what car he was driving. I'm not a doctor but I was diagnosed with Addison's at age 13 or so. Was just generally feeling lethargic. Vomiting. Dizzy. Mom calls the hospital with symptoms and they said if I had all three at the same time to come in to be safe. Orderly or whatever checks my pulse in the lobby. 30 stroke 15. He laughs well this one's broken and gets another machine. 30 stroke 15 wait. What? Calls a doctor. They double check it and run me to the ER for fluids. Again. Not a doctor here. But apparently that's not even high enough to have a pulse. They had no clue how I was walking let alone conscious. But saw the numbers and after realizing it was accurate they freaked the hell out. And of course that freaked my mom out. Them telling my mom 30 stroke 15 is the BP of a dead person did not help. And then they said it's either autoimmune or cancer. My immune system apparently ate my adrenal glands. Now I'm on meds for life. Lucky me. On the bright side though I never really have to worry about high blood pressure. My dad. Walked a mile to see a friend and tried to walk up the stairs. Couldn't get up one step. Walked back one mile to his office. Looked up to his doctor was. Since he hadn't seen one in 20 years. And drove there. No appointment. DR. Hooks him up to an EKG. But it's fine. Tells him there's a cardiologist next door. It's the end of the day. They'll see him. Just in case. They hook him up to a blood pressure monitor while he's on a treadmill. The monitor is behind him. He can't see it. He starts walking. They set a countdown timer for 3 minutes. And about 30 seconds in. One of the nurses steps out of the room. My dad is watching the timer and it counts down to zero. He feels fine and figures he's going home but the door opens and two ambulance attendants are wheeling in a gurney. While he was on the treadmill. His blood pressure dropped to zero. Then restarted. Then dropped to zero again. The nurse who stepped out of the room dialed 911. They let him finish because they figured as soon as he stopped. The heart attack would start in earnest. Quadruple bypass later and he lived. But note. He said he never felt the same. Bypass is not a panacea. Apparently. Not a commonly used word. 15 years ago my mum dated a guy who had both a brain tumor and leukemia. To treat the leukemia they had to stop treating the brain tumor and vice versa. He was given 2 years to live. He told my mum that he needed to focus on getting his affairs in order and spend time with his kids. They'd only been dating a few months. Very casually. Saw the dude a few weeks ago. Still kicking. Still has the tumor. They successfully treated the leukemia. But now he has osteoporosis, and a sort of not epilepsy. They found out he had brittle bone when he had a seizure and broke a lot of bones falling down. But he's just getting on with it. Couldn't tell the guy with an axe. Not a doctor. But firefighter. We had a 30s year old male put a shotgun in his mouth pointing up to his nose pull the trigger and survive. We show up work him. He's breathing. But missing most of his face and we transport him. He survives and we are all amazed. Three months later he does it again. But a point two two to the temple it bounced around and exited through his eye. He survives again. With some mental deficits and a glass eye. But still one of the craziest I've seen. Not a doctor but a student nurse. 
I had a patient come into the psych ward from the emergency department after he had cut off his own right arm from the elbow down. With a ducking chainsaw. He only survived because he apparently had some kind of rare clotting disorder that prevented him from bleeding to death. He was severely schizophrenic and believed that his arm was going to grow back. Edit, I didn't expect this to blow up the way it did. I love this story because my dad was a psychiatrist. And I finally have something way weirder than any of the tales of his profession he ever told. Happy y'all found it as interesting as I did. A few years back my wife was doing clinicals at the local hospital while still in school and a guy came in with a blood sugar of 9, 9. And he was totally conscious lucid. As a type 1 diabetic myself I almost fell off my chair when I heard that. Another weird world of genetics post. Got a sample involving some kind of offbeat case. Where they wanted prenatal paternity testing plus analysis from my company without telling us anything about the patient and the background. As sort of a blind verification thing. The paternal test results strongly suggested that the prenatal sample appeared exclusively paternal the fetus only had one set of autochromosomes, humans have. Usually. Two sets. At this point we decided to stop referring to the prenatal thing as a fetus because genetically this is generally incompatible with life. The answer, it was DNA from the products of molar pregnancy. Which I highly encourage no one to read more about. As it's pretty ducking creepy. Not a doctor. But March 2018 my father, who is a type 2 diabetic, ended up in the ER because of high blood sugar. Don't remember the exact number. But his blood sugar was over 1000. Handfuls of doctors and nurses told me that was easily the highest blood sugar reading they'd ever witnessed. They couldn't believe he was alive or at least not in a diabetic coma. His blood was the consistency of syrup. My grandfather. He had one eye from a roofing nail that flew up and destroyed it. A large scar on his forehead from an axe head flying off in the blade side hitting him. Prostate cancer. And oh yeah he was hit by a train in his truck and was in a body cast from his armpits down for almost a year in the 50s. He lived till 96. My wife treated a foreign student at the university she worked at who took some drug. I don't recall which. Thought he could fly. And jumped out a third floor window. Landing directly on his face. He went into a coma and when they x-rayed him, or some other scan, they found he'd aspirated all of his teeth. It took days to figure out who he was and over a week to contact his family. Geneticist here. A healthcare company in our field sent us a sample for genetic testing of a certain gene. The paperwork said the patient was 35 male. We found a mutation in the gene of interest which was squarely in the category of this person shouldn't be alive. This is a prenatally lethal disorder. Also we noticed the sample had no Y chromosome marker. Facet them. The provider had put the patient label on the wrong sample before mailing it to us. This sheet happens way too much at some companies. Not a doctor but works 7 years in an inpatient psych ward. Had lots of alcoholics come in. One came in drunk but walking. His back when tested was 0.68. He was awake and mostly walking. Another man took a circular saw to his inner thigh. Got 1.5 in and all the way across. Somehow missed the funeral. Crazy bastard lived and had a sense of humor on day 2. Not a doctor. But I do have a story. Friend of a friend. She was hiking and got a scratch on her leg. Later that night she wasn't feeling well. So she went to the hospital. They said it was flu and sent her home. She went back the next day and was diagnosed with sepsis. She wound up in a medically induced coma and had to lose all four of her limbs and have a lot of internal issues as well. She's doing great now with prosthetics and an amazing attitude. Witnessed a sedan with a trailer flip four times at 75 miles per hour on a highway into a ditch right in front of me. A 12 year wasn't wearing a seat belt and was thrown from the vehicle through an open window. He had a superficial laceration of his leg. And was in shock. But otherwise apparently unharmed. We did a quick trauma evaluation of the family. Everyone seemed okay. And applied pressure to the kid's bleeding leg until Ems got there. 
when we were running to the wrecked car as the dust was settling. I was sure we were just going to see disembodied pieces of that kid everywhere. But he was really, really lucky. Wear seatbelts. Folks. Everyone who remained buckled in the car didn't even have a scratch. Oh this is a good one for me. My roommate is a heavy drinker. He had to have some tests done a few months ago and it shows his liver function and how well it's doing. This kid drinks himself to oblivion weekly. Eats like shit. Doesn't exercise. Weighs like 350 pounds. And smokes. I'm thinking his liver. And most of his other organs. Looks like a mummy shriveled up scrotum. His liver function test comes back perfectly clean. He's perfectly healthy on paper. Other than being over 